So I'm going to read to you Arthur Babysits by Mark Brown. So you're going to listen to this story and while you're listening, you need to have this sheet. I sent this home with you so it's in the folder. It has popcorn on it and it says title here. So I wrote Arthur Babysits. You need to do the same. Um, so during, while I'm reading the story, you need to be thinking of one, two, three, four details that happen. And then at the bottom here, you're going to write what the main idea of the story is. So you might have to watch this twice, if um, watch the video once or twice or maybe even three times to fill that out. Um, so be paying attention for four details and the main idea of Arthur Babysits. Alrighty. Arthur's sister D.W. had a problem. The Tibble twins are visiting again and they're driving me crazy, she said. They're everywhere I go. Oh, they can't be that bad, said Arthur. How would you know, said D.W. Later that afternoon, Arthur and D.W. took Kate for a walk. Look, shouted the Tibble twins. There's D.W. Oh no, said D.W. Quick, let's hide. I'm in a terrible, oh, Miss Tibble looked worried. I'm in a terrible pickle, she said. I need a sitter for my grandson tonight and I can't find one anywhere. Arthur can do it, said D.W. He babysits me all the time. Oh, Arthur, you're a lifesaver, said Mrs. Tibble. I'll call your mother and set it up right now. get comfortable. Babysitting is such a big responsibility, said Arthur. I'm a little nervous. You'll do a fine job, said Mother. We'll be right here if you want to call us, said Father. Here's my crash helmet, said D.W. You'll need it. Why, asked Arthur. Are you coming along? You think I'm trouble, said D.W.? Just wait. On the way, Arthur walked by the sugar bowl. Hey, Arthur, called Buster. Where are you going? I'm on my way to babysit for Mrs. Tibble, said Arthur. Not the terrible Tibble twins, gasped Prunella. My sister babysat for them once, and once was enough. You can always back out, said Buster, while you're still alive. Don't worry, said Francine. It'll be just like babysitting D.W. and baby Kate. Arthur remembered what that was like. Now he was really worried. Mrs. Tibble was waiting for Arthur. I'm so glad you're here, she said, and so are the twins. This is little Tommy in red and Timmy's in blue. Almost bedtime, darlings. I'll be back soon. Very soon, I hope, said Arthur. Nighty night, Grammy, said the twins sweetly. She's gone, screamed the twins. Playtime, bang, bang, bang. No, bedtime, said, Ar said Arthur. We're not sleepy, said Timmy. The phone rang. It was D.W. I called with some advice, she said. Calm them down with a quiet game like cards. Thanks, said Arthur. Bye. How about a nice quiet game of cards, Arthur? Asked Arthur. Great, said the twins. We know a really good card game, said Tommy. 52 pick up, they screamed. Just then the phone rang again. again. It's D.W. Sounds like they're out of control, she said. You need to show them who's boss. Thanks a lot, said Arthur. I don't know if you've ever played 52 card pick up, but it's not fun. My brothers used to do it to me when I was little. It's where you throw a deck of cards all over and then the person you played with has to go pick them up. So I hope you never do that to anybody. Let's play cowboys, said Tommy. I'll be the sheriff, said Arthur, because I'm the boss. And we'll be the bad guy, said Timmy. The next time the phone rang, Timmy answered it. Arthur can't come to the phone right now, he said. He's all tied up. Time for hide and seek, called Tommy. You'll never find us. When Arthur finally got loose, he searched and searched. If I don't find them soon, he thought, I'll be in big trouble. Just then, the phone rang again. What's going on over there, asked D.W. Shouldn't they be in bed? 
I can't talk right now, said Arthur. I'm looking for the twins. You mean you lost them, shouted D.W.? Not exactly, he said. I just can't find them. You're in really big trouble, said D.W. What are you going to do? Just then, Arthur noticed the curtains wiggling. You'll see, he said. I sure hope I find them before the swamp thing does, he added loudly. Swamp thing, asked Tommy from behind the curtain. Yes, the one that comes out on nights just like tonight, Arthur said. Sit down and I'll tell you about it. Arthur used his spookiest voice. Once in the dark, a spooky swamp, there lived a horrible, big, slimy, stinky, green swamp thing, he began. You mean like a monster? Tommy asked meekly. Exactly, said Arthur, with long, sharp teeth, and the swamp thing realized it was very, very hungry, said Arthur. It left the swamp in search of dinner. What did he like to eat? Timmy asked in a shaky voice. Boys, said Arthur, especially twin boys. The twins moved closer to Arthur. The swamp thing began to move, moan for hunger, continued Arthur, until it came to a big old house just like this one. I hear footsteps, cried Timmy. It's only your imagination, said Arthur. Want to sit on my lap? Well, just for a minute, said Tommy. Slowly whispered Arthur with its big slimy green hand, the swamp thing opened the front door. I smell dinner, it said. It licked its lips. Help, screamed the twins. It's coming in our front door, yelled Timmy. Just then the door did open and the lights went on. I'm home, said Mrs. Tibble, and look at my little angels. Arthur must be a wonderful babysitter. He's not scared of anything, said Timmy, and he'll tell great stories, said Tommy. We want him to babysit again. The twins hugged Arthur goodnight. Then Mrs. Tibble paid Arthur and thanked him for doing such a fine job. When Arthur got home, D.W. was still up. You're home early, she said. Did you get fired? No, said Arthur. Babysitting isn't so bad. Mrs. Tibble thinks I'm pretty good at it. Now she wants me to babysit the twins every afternoon right here at our house. And since you know so much about babysitting, you can help. All righty. Now today I want you to turn in your four details and the main idea of the Arthur book that I just read to you. <laughs> 